welcome to Sugar River United Methodist Church. My name is Gary Holmes, and I serve as pastor here. It's such a blessing to welcome you to the start of Lent, this time of self-reflection and connecting more profoundly with God as we prepare uh, for the truth of Easter for our lives. We're looking at the series uh, Made for a Miracle, Mike Slaughter's book, and I, I hope uh, you might purchase that book and be involved in, in this study. I think it's vital and uh, it's for such a time as this that we might focus in on how we can gain a deeper understanding of God for our lives. So, I pray the service will uh, guide you to be reflective and, and see how God is at work. Um, I just really believe God's drawn us here today and in this season to be together. We're blessed to start our uh, worship portion of our worship today um, with the, uh, the dance group Magnum Opus. Um, who is such a blessing, and I'm so excited that they could do interpretive dance for us around um, Your Grace is Enough and uh, Amazing Grace, um, Your Chains Are Gone, um, songs that we love and enjoy here at the church, and the beauty of the expression of the dancers. Let us worship together in this creative work. Hi, I am Abigail Henninger. I am the founder of Magnum Opus. Magnum Opus is Wisconsin's only nonprofit professional Christian ballet company. We've been around since 2017 and we long to bring pure artistic movement to all over Wisconsin and beyond. Today I have with you two of my company artists and two apprentices. So right here we have Lauren and Faith and on my other side is Julia and Sophia. We are going to do a piece for you today and we hope you are blessed. Good morning, my name is Jenny Huffman. Please hear these words of invitation to worship. So many songs have been written about miracles. 
mostly linked to finding love, the right person, in the right place, and at the right time. Perhaps we all possess that miracle now. God always knows where we are, what we need, and gives it to us unconditionally. The miracle being we already have God's love. We just have to believe. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the miracle of your love. Encourage us to use it. Guide us to places where it is needed. Give us strength to share it with everyone in ways that can be trusted and effective. Help us to love others as you love us. Amen. Hi, I'm Maureen, and this is Lexi and Lois, my favorite helpers. And I've got something here that I think might interest you because what I have in my hand is a miracle. You want to have a guess? Maybe it's something that God wanted everybody to know and have. Okay. Boy, that's a lot to hold in my hand. Something that God would want everyone to know and to have. How about you? Any ideas? Maybe like... Kind of like hers, but like a small piece of something. Uh -huh. A small piece of something? Okay, yeah. here we go. I'm, go. I'm going to, oh, careful. I don't want it to, to uh, oh. A piece of paper? Oh, 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 oh. Can you see it? It's an apple seed. It is an apple seed. How, how can an apple seed be a miracle? It can make an apple tree. It does make an apple tree. So... Come spring when all the snow is gone, we can take this seed and we can put it in the ground and we'll just wait and it'll grow into a tree and it have also, apples. It also is a piece of something. It's a piece of an apple. It is. So is that all? No. Uh, is that, if I put the seed outside in, the, in your grass, will there be an apple tree there in a, in a year or two? Maybe. Oh. If there's enough water and if and there's enough, enough sun. sunlight. Very good. So also, if there wasn't enough water, we'd have to give it water, wouldn't we? Uh-huh. Water. Yeah. And what were you going to say? I forgot. Yo, know, I'm sorry I interrupted you. So this is a miracle because without God's love and grace and power in there, how could that be a tree and give us apples? Oh, I know what I was going to say. What? I remembered that in the Bible when somebody dropped the and it turned to a snake. He was by the apple tree. He was by an apple tree, I think. Well, you, you got you got Johnny Appleseed and Moses in there. And Moses is <laughs> definitely that was a miracle when he dropped the seed. But you know, sometimes God miracle God's miracles yeah. like planting seeds in the garden for vegetables and fruit like strawberries, they need our help because God gifted us with talents like knowing when a seed would need water or knowing where it would be best to plant it because it would need the right soil and knowing how to take care of it. So sometimes God miracles expect a little bit of us. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Do you agree? Yeah? It's also sometimes our personality helps us with that too. True. So like if we're good at, I think she means like if we're good at knowing that how to take care of seeds, that's part of our personality and it helps us grow an apple. Yep. Oh. Basically what I'm trying to say. I think you two think very much alike and I thank you. So let's pray to God and thank him for miracles. Here we go. Dear God, we are so grateful for all the miracles that are happening around us all the time and sometimes we have to help and sometimes we just don't take time to see all the wonderful things that are here just because of you. We thank you for the gifts you gave us to help your miracles because you want us to use what you've given us. And we want to thank you for all the wonder and glory you put in the world. And we say all this and we thank you and we all say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. She's good at that. Hi, I'm Molly Fulton, and I'm a Stephen minister and on the surf team here at Sugar River. Let's pray the breakthrough prayer. Creative and life-giving God, open our eyes that we may see and embrace the new things springing forth like a river in the desert. Refresh and renew us so that we may have the courage to follow your path and share Christ's love. Amen. 
And now I would like to share a prayer that I found um, by the author Matthew Paul Turner. Let's pray. Dear God, may our love resemble your love. May our love exist for all people. May our love encourage life and hope, sacrifice much, and seek a pathway of humili humility. May our love heal wounds, physical and spiritual. May our love resist fear, challenge ignorance, and embody mercy, grace, and resurrection. May our love empower forgiveness, tolerance, dialogue, patience, and peace. May our love mend what is broken, rebuild what is torn down, and bridge what is divided, and refill what is empty. Amen. And I'm glad I got through that because I started crying like the first five times. <laughs> All right, let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear. us way too much to give us lesser things cause what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your near and what if trials of this life the rain, the storms, the hardest nights Are your mercies in disguise? Good morning, my name is Abby Shaughnessy and today's scripture reading comes from Luke 9. Jesus sends out the 12. When Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases and he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The word of God for the people of God. Here we are, the first Sunday Lent. Lent is that preparation time for Easter. It's marked by self-reflection and, and giving up things that might separate us from God and, and maybe fasting so that we can hunger more profoundly for who God is in our life. So I hope this Lent season guides us in a more profound meaning and deeper relationship with God. We're looking at the series uh, guided by Mike Slaughter's book, Made for a Miracle. And uh, knowing Mike, I asked him if he would uh, send us a greeting. So uh, you might have seen this on Facebook, but here is a greeting to us as we begin our series from the author, uh, Mike Slaughter. Hi, I want to give a big shout out and welcome to my brothers and sisters at Sugar River Church. You know, I'm so excited that you're doing a study in my book, Made for a Miracle. You know, God has created each one of us for a special purpose. Jesus said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. That means eternal. For most of us, that's not our day job, but it's that special part, that gift we have, that responsibility we have to do kingdom work on earth. Jesus said, yeah, we're made for a miracle. He said, the things I do, you will do, and even greater things than these. Well, I'll be praying for you during this Lenten Easter uh, season, and God bless you. So Mike has given us the challenge. 
the God in human form, that Jesus comes to us to demonstrate how we can do the miraculous, that we can be a part of God's intervention to heal and to bring hope and reconcile humanity, to care for a broken world that God so desperately loves. So we're called into that. And what we'll see is it's kind of a, a combination of both a divine action but also um, human responsibility. So the miraculous becomes an opportunity. It's not about a cosmic magician zapping things into compliance, but it's God's of God, a miraculous movement. As we learn about the nature of God, offering healing and forgiveness and reconciliation, that we can be a part of that. It's costly. It demands much from us. But in the midst of it, we find our own salvation and we find the miraculous happen for people in need. Now the scripture starts out in chapter 9 with um, after Jesus earlier in Luke had made a ch who chose the disciples and then began to teach and um, prepare them and now already in chapter 9 early in the gospel um, he's sending them out. And, and the scriptures tell us that he, he didn't want them to take much. You get the sense that but when you're out there, just stay with people and get to know them and be with them. So it's, it's less about this sense of um, that you're there uh, to witness to them, but to do ministry with them. God's already active in the world around them. God's power is present already. The miraculous can happen if we're willing to open our lives and see what God can do through us. We're kind of like those UPS workers who are delivering that important package. We can be a part of that. And our faith comes from um, goes beyond the mundane or the sense of duty uh, or re religious repetition of activity. But faith and religion finds us power in living into the way that Jesus leads us into. And it, it begins with this personal Relationship. Can you remember when your call to follow Jesus became very personal? See, our tendency to think it's, it's a private affair, but personal doesn't mean private. The, the opposite of personal is impersonal. A personal relationship leads us to community. Now, I've learned that over and over, thinking about how my life was changed. It's an incredible experience of Christ in my life in the mid-70s. I was a part of the church. I knew Jesus at some level, but it became very personal. It's kind of like John Wesley's heartwarming experience, I guess. It caught my emotion. Not only my mind, but my heart were captured by the presence of God. And it led for my hands to serve and to care, to bring more meaning, to be part of the miracles God was doing. I had an opportunity to have a conversation with uh, uh, Christy Johnson, and uh, Christy's been a part of our church from the beginning, and uh, her faith has always found its way demonstrating care for others. So I was just excited to uh, take, take a moment and have a conversation with her. So um, let's hear a little bit from Christy. Christy, I want to thank you for taking a moment to share with us this morning. Uh, we start this Lenten series on um, Mike Slaughter's book, and he focuses on the importance of knowing God's presence, being uh, available to that presence and see what God can do. And um, I just couldn't help but think of your faith and your life and um, what a blessing it has been. And um, so I just thought we'd ask a couple questions. Uh, the first one is really just, you know, if you remember uh, back when, when following Jesus really became more personal to you, um, what would you say to that? You know, I do remember that. Um, I grew up in the church. Uh, it was a very important part of my family's life. So it was just that's what we did. I went to church camp starting from about the age of 10. And I remember I was think I was about 14. And always at the last night of church camp, they would have, I think, what they called a commitment service. Sure. And I remember that year, of course, I'd, I had heard it every year, but that year just really feeling called mm. to make that personal commitment. Mm. And I remember being overwhelmed with emotion. And my camp counselor being there to talk with me, to listen to me, to help me through that. Um, 
I'll never forget her. I'm sure she doesn't remember me and doesn't remember that, but I will never forget her. <laughs> yeah, she might. That's a beautiful <laughs> story. And it's such a powerful thing. And, and, and so as you look back on that, how, does, how has that directed your life to kind of connect with some of the activity uh, of seeing God at work uh, around you? Um, you know, after that, I was still always very involved in the church, involved in youth group. I remember um, as a young adult, I don't know, reading or hearing somewhere that if you have always believed, because, you know, that's how you grew up, mm -hmm. you needed to kind of question that in order to um, really make it your own. Mm -hmm. And I, I did kind of try to go through that. And I read the Bible a lot and um, never questioned to the point of doubting, but questioned, mm -hmm. I guess, enough to say, yes, this is what I believe, not just what my parents believed and raised me in, but this is what I believe. Yeah, boy, that's powerful. That is so important for our development, isn't it? Because doubt mm -hmm. is not the opposite of faith. It's just a part of its development, right? Right. Hey, when you think of that, Christy, you have been so active in serving and caring life, the church and the community. Uh, where, where do you see God at work in those activities? In the community? Yeah. You mean? Um, well, obviously, a very um, obvious one is Badger Prairie Needs Network. Um, I was a part of the food pantry um, and helped transition it to the uh, Badger Prairie Needs Network, which offers much more to the community than just food. So I think that is huge. Um, I think certainly our church is huge um, as a presence in the community. At least I certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, it, and it's, it's efforts from you and others in the church that are so significant. Um, so, I mean, if you think about that, <clears throat> where do you, um, can you think of a specific moment or a time when you really felt that, um, that connection with what God is doing and seeing God work through people in the community and in efforts of ministry and ministry? Uh, well, again, I think I would have to say it would be through the Badger Prairie Needs Network. Mm -hmm. um, it is an all volunteer organization. People give so many hours um, and they're getting nothing back themselves other than you know the um, gratification of having served other people yeah yeah well I appreciate that because I I think that's so important that, that when we think of the miracle that God has created in each one of us is that God's created opportunity and giftedness and when we live into that when it just gives you that sense of meaning and 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 mm -hmm. meaning for life when you see beyond yourself and sometimes it's hard especially I think nowadays when people are so isolated uh, we get so focused in on self, and and I'm grateful for witnesses like yours, Christy, that reminds us that um, the miraculous work of God happens when we look beyond ourselves, see the needs of others, and mm -hmm. and act in that way. So thank you for your gift to our church, and um, appreciate your willingness to share today. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and you know, that also reminds me of um, the idea that God gives each of us gifts and talents. Mm. He gives each of us different gifts and talents, and he expects us to use those. Yeah. to help others. Amen. Good. I word. mean, if we all had the same gifts and talents, there wouldn't be the need for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a strange world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> the diversity becomes so important in that and um, celebrate it instead of find a reason to reject people for being different, I suppose, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Christy. Thanks for sharing your time and appreciate all that you do. Oh, I appreciate all that you do, especially mm -hmm. now keeping us going. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So she has this personal relationship that led her to a public ministry. And, and did you know she talked about the giftedness that we all bring to it? That God can utilize those gifts. And they're varied. They're not all the same. And so it's living into that, finding certain ways. Again, the scripture says, Jesus got them together, community, sharing, the Spirit gives fruit that lasts, um, giftedness for building people up. That's the danger of what we consider a private relationship with Jesus. It doesn't make sense. For God is love, and love is relational. And so the miraculous can happen when we invest in the needs and cares for those around us. We're going to go through this a lot in our series, and I, and I hope it challenges us to think of ways in which we can live more profoundly into that story. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, 
Whoever believes in me will do the works I have am, been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that my Father may be glorified in the Son. There's a sense of faith and work so combined together. Wesley described in the founder of Methodism as two sides of the same coin. I've even heard Slatter talk about faith as a noun. It's not a noun, but a verb. It's beyond a set of belief systems. Jesus came for us to live into a way to follow, to move, and see the miraculous of God's grace at work, to heal and redeem, to reconcile. So greater things we're called to do. One of the beautiful things this weekend is um, we had a, a retreat um, with uh, Bill Schultz, who is the founder of um, Madison Area um, Miracle League. There's that word again, miracle. It was just fascinating to listen to Bill talk about his, his journey of faith. How he had disabilities, a shorter arm and hand and leg and all the things that worked against him. And, and yet he overcame a lot of things. And by age nine, he was hoping to... Uh, joined the Little League, and sure enough, they said even, even though he was quite good for his limitations, um, they said it was unsafe for him to play. It, it, it really destroyed him in a lot of ways, but he still um, continued on, found opportunities uh, to serve with managing, and uh, even did that up through college for sporting. But here we are later in life, and um, we find Bill is is active in working with the Children's Hospital and, and finding such great meaning in that. And then gets this opportunity here in his 70s to start a league that he was not allowed to enter into but designed for children with disabilities. It's miraculous. And to listen to him hear him talk about his story, and how he wrote a book called Shorthanded, um, and how long it took him to do that, but yet he felt the support that together with others he could do this and what a difference that's made and constantly seeing relationships playing into his development and then the founding of this league in the Madison area. It's miraculous. And we can be a part of that. So how is it with your soul? What are the needs that you see around us that God is calling you to live into Again, we're going to be talking through Lent, this idea of this divine intervention that God is seeking to heal, to redeem, to reconcile a world, and then our human initiative, seeking to be a part of it, seeking God's direction and power. You know, it's so important to see in this power that the disciples were given power for healing and to share and bear witness to the truth. Again, not to as much as with. And then um, to see in juxtaposition to that, we have Herod in the story later on too, and we know that Herod used power to maintain his own self-preservation and how it was uh, oppressive. And we can see when people use power um, for self and um, to the oppressing of others to maintain us either a standard of living or an ideology. There's a power here that God, it's transformational. And it's miraculous when we can seek and live into that. So let's journey together. Here's the opportunity. How might God use us? Because we're made for a miracle. And I believe together, we're sent by God, we can make a difference, even in a pandemic, especially in a pandemic. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you for your word. Thank you for calling us and then sending us. And even though we feel maybe we're not equipped or don't know enough, may we trust in you to give us the words, to guide us, to move forward as best we can to be aware of your divine presence, to break through that we can be involved in the miraculous things of healing and forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Kendra Hinsman, Grow Director here at Sugar River, and we are so excited to talk to you today about our core groups that are beginning for Lent and um, centering around our Lenten season theme, which is Made for a Miracle. And I'm going to let our great leaders take just a second to introduce themselves and tell you about the groups they're leading this season. Well, my name is Robin Kelby, and I'm going to be starting up a new core group that's going to be Wednesday evenings at 6.30. We're so new that we don't even have a name yet, so if you can think of any good names or if you want to join, then let Kendra know. My name is Arliss Nillis, and I facilitate the LOL small group. LOL stands for Live Out Loud, Learn Out Loud, Love Out Loud, and of course, Laugh Out Loud. At the present time, LOL is a group of eight women. Men have joined us for some of our previous studies, and they're always welcome. We're looking forward to the Lenten study, Made for a Miracle. Our meetings will be on Wednesday afternoons from 3 o'clock until 5, using Zoom. If you're interested and this time works for you, we'll be happy for you to join us. Just tell Kendra. And I'm Mike Polk. I lead the Thursday morning men's group. We meet every Thursday at 6.45 a.m. right here on Zoom. All men are welcome, uh, but you just have to bring your own coffee. <laughs> Thank you so much, leaders. And I also wanted to let everyone know that if you haven't had a chance to pick up your Made for a Miracle book yet, you can go ahead and email me at core at sugarriverumc.org. And also, if you're interested in any of these classes, go ahead and email me as well, and I will put you in touch. And we hope to see all of you uh, this Lent for a group and um, learn more about being made for a miracle. It is such a blessing to have you in worship this morning. Now we take a moment to respond to God's gracious love by presenting our tithes and offerings. We give proportionally from our income that God might be honored Others may be blessed, and we experience the joy of reflecting the image of God in our lives through our generosity. If you are a first time or new viewer, please don't feel obligated to give. Your presence here today is a gift in itself. Your gift allows Sugar River to remain an effective mission outpost. Please note the different ways to give on the screen. We would like to allow you to now Give as God leads. In an effort to understand the impact of this ministry, would you also please take a moment to like or comment within either platform you view this service? Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. My hope is the Spirit continues to speak to our lives through this season, that we can gain a deeper understanding of who God is for our life and how we can be agents of God's work the miracle of grace and healing, redemption, reconciliation. Next week we'll gather again, and this next um, week we'll look at the reality that um, the miraculous comes at a cost. It takes human initiative to connect with the divine action, and it's not always easy. So what does that mean? And where's God leading us that might be costly for us to enter into, but we know kind of down deep, it's where God is leading us. So may we join together. I pray the Holy Spirit be upon you to renew you and strengthen you, connect you with God's purpose for your life, and the miraculous can be made relevant to you and alive in your everyday situations. Go in the peace and the power of Christ. Proclaim good news, bring healing to the sick. And Jesus, we pray, amen.